गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो चिल्ड्रन टुडे वी विल डू वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज ऑफ योर बुक एन टाइटल्ड द नेकलेस द नेकलेस इज वन ऑफ द मास्टर पीसेस रिटन बाय गाय डी मोपसंद अ वेरी फेमस राइटर सो चिल्ड्रन द स्टोरी वुड गिव यू एन एक्चुअल मॉरल बाय इट्स एंड सो read it carefully and i really hope that you would enjoy reading the story like throughout the plot of the story is so interesting full of suspense and you know various various sub themes are involved various stages in the life of human beings those are involved like those are interwoven in such a beautiful manner that i feel that you would really love reading this text so starting from the first uh, interrogative statement what kind of person is uh, madam loisel why is she always unhappy and what kind of a person is her husband so children there are three major characters in the story first is madam loisel whom you may call the protagonist of the story madam loisel her name is matilda so she is she is married to mr loisel so she is addressed in the story as madam loisel and it is told about madam loisel that she always remains unhappy and the beginning question itself is like why is she always unhappy second is what kind of person is her husband it means mr loisel's character has also been discussed that the two means husband and wife mr loisel and madam loisel both were possessing entirely different kinds of nature so they differ in nature they differ in their taste they differ in their perception their dealing with people their attitude so everything is different so how they manage to cope up with life uh, would be shared in the story by gov uh, sorry by the writer so uh, see reading the text it would uh, be revealed that uh, how the story line begins actually so she was one of those pretty young ladies born as if through an error of destiny into a family of clerks so a very abrupt beginning i would say this lesson could not uh, you know be begin more interesting in more interesting manner except this line like the writer could not write more beautiful line than this she was one of those pretty young ladies she was means madam loisel was one of those beautiful young ladies as if god has mistakenly sent her into the poor family of clerks you know the writer gai di maupasant wants to say here that like most beautiful people or i would say like very beautiful very attractive people are born in rich families so they are meant for riches or simultaneously like uh, on the other hand you can say that riches are meant for such people so the writer here explains that she was so beautiful so attractive so charming that probably god had done some mistake by sending her into a poor family of clerks i hope that's clear she had no dowry no hopes no meaning of becoming known loved or married by a man either rich or distinguished and she allowed herself to marry a petty clerk in the office of the board of education she was simple but she was unhappy so the writer further tells us that she was not that rich that her parents could afford any dowry any hopes or like she could not even uh, like uh, generate that much capacity to build a love relationship with some man or like she was not even in that situation that she could be loved by a man it means uh, you know uh, loving someone before marriage uh, is considered just a ritual that is uh, you know accomplished by rich people only so that's why the writer here says that that she had no opportunity to be loved by some man right so either rich or distinguished distinguished means the one who is totally different from others the one who stands in a different queue so 
like she was having no hope of uh, getting into this love life or marrying any rich person because she herself belonged to a poor family so that's why she had to she allowed herself to marry means she had to even though she didn't want that but out of helplessness out of her poverty she had to marry a petty clerk a small clerk who was who was appointed in the board of education like she was simple minded but you uh, know she was never happy in her life like she never got happy at anything any situation so see what was the reason of her sadness uh, second paragraph she suffered incessantly feeling herself born for all delicacies and luxuries she suffered from the poverty of her apartment the shabby walls the worn chairs all these things tortured and angered her you know children what is explained here that why did she suffer she suffered because she considered herself uh, to be uh, you know treated like a queen she felt that she should have been born for all the delicate things and luxuries in life you know luxury cars uh, costly jewelry costly dresses elegant furniture like all the luxuries comforts and delicacies like she should have all those things but as i told you that as she was poor she could not afford these things so that's why she suffered incessantly she always used to grudge over the things that i don't have this i don't have that i should be having this in my life so this was the root cause of her sufferings she suffered from poverty of her apartment it means her house was not beautiful it was not good looking that's why she used to feel ashamed of that the shabby walls and worn chairs it means the walls uh, must not have been painted from many years those walls looked uh, no, uh, i may say untidy right that is not clean and worn chairs old and uh, you know broken chairs were there in her house so all these things tortured her it was a torture to her mind to see such furniture in her house and she always used to get angry over petty things so that was the root cause of her unhappiness i hope the two paragraphs are clear next when she seated herself for dinner opposite her husband who uncovered the tureen with a delighted air saying oh the good pot pie i know nothing better than that she would think of elegant dinners of shining silver she thought of the exquisite food served in marvelous dishes she had neither frocks nor jewels nothing and she loved only those things so children reading these lines i am reminded of a character so uh, i don't remember the name of the actress but if you have seen movie bala bala movie uh, aishman khurana uh, is the protagonist there in the movie so he married a girl he was bald right he didn't have much hair on his head so like he married a girl who is very beautiful and like she is all the time like she is concerned with all these things looking beautiful wearing uh, you know standardized clothes wearing heavy jewelry so looking beautiful overall having all kinds of good things having all kinds of delicacies and luxuries like i can rightly compare madam loisel to that heroine of movie bala like she was always like that she should be the center of attraction of everybody everybody should compliment her that yes you are looking marvelous you are looking wonderful you appear charming so these were the compliments that she expected but what actually happened in her life so when she used to uh, take dinner with her husband mr loisel so one day they were about to take dinner and uh, when mr loisel uncovered means took up the plate from the tureen you know a dish a wide one so dish so uh, seeing uh, noticing the delighted air means the fragrance that was coming out of the food he said oh the good pot pie so it means children the writer wants to show her that uh, how uh, light minded he was like he was full of praise for little things like he was opposite in nature to mathilde loisel 
सो आर हेरोइन मेटेल्डा और मैथलेड सो बोथ द प्रोनाउंसिएशन आर करेक्ट सो मैथलेड वॉज नॉट एट ऑल यू नो फुल ऑफ प्रेज फॉर सच पेटी थिंग्स she always desired big things in life she dreams of big things on the opposite uh, madam mr loisel mr loisel was a humble fellow he loved petty things he used to praise even uh, the i even i may say like he used to praise each and everything prepared in dinner lunch etc like he was full of praise his nature was like that that he used to praise uh, his wife so that she should uh, get happy right so you know he uh, one evening he said that he really likes that i know nothing better than that means like he has not eaten anything delicious than this pot pie so when he remarked when he paid this compliment to madam loisel she became angry instead of getting happy at the compliment you know whenever we receive some compliment we feel happy so on the opposite matilda or methylid loisel was that kind of woman like instead of getting happy at that compliment like she begins to think of you know elegant dinners high class dinners served in shining silver shining silver means shining silver utensils exquisite costly and delicious food that is served in marvelous means wonderful utensils so she neither had any frocks to wear like uh, no gowns no jewelry nothing and these are the things she loved it means uh, what did she love she loved all those things which can be purchased by spending a lot and lot of money right so next paragraph she had a rich friend a soulmate at the convent who she did not like to visit she suffered so much when she returned she wept for whole days from despair and disappointment so that means that she had a rich friend a schoolmate at a convent means a classmate was there whom she never liked to visit why because she was rich and methylid loisel always used to think that if she goes to her house she would feel guilty so she was always having that inferiority complex in her mind like that's why she never wanted to visit that classmate she wept for whole days from despair and disappointment means every time she used to think of riches and riches and that that was the root cause of her sufferings means that's why she used to suffer a lot because you know thinking of rich things or like wasting your time thinking that i should have been rich i should have received all the rich things so that doesn't work what works in life work works in life children hard work works in life if we do hard work all those riches can be achieved all the things can be achieved everything can be achieved if we do hard work if we do hard labor so thinking about rich things you know imagining those things those luxuries and comforts in one's thoughts so it doesn't work at all so that was the problem of mathlet loisel that she used to think a lot like instead of doing anything with her hands she used to think only so see what happens next one evening her husband returned elated bearing in hand bearing in his hand a large envelope here he said there is something for you the story would take a bit of turn now mr loisel has returned from office and one day like when he returns what he says he uh, just displays a ray of hope for uh, his wife madam loisel and uh, with love he says that that here is something for you it means she, he must have brought some gift for mathlid loisel so she quickly drew out a printed card on which were inscribed those words on which were inscribed means on which those words were written see what was written the minister of public instruction and madam george rampanyu ask the honor of mr and madam loisel's company monday evening january 18 at the minister's residence so see children they have received an invitation to a grand party you know that's what she loved this is what methylid loisel loves actually 
she loves grand parties wearing pretty dresses wearing heavy jewelry so she wants all these comforts and luxuries so that's why this is the good news according to mr loisel so he says that he has received a card so reading it further instead of being delighted as her husband had dropped she threw the invitation spitefully upon the table murmuring what do you suppose i want with that it means she gets angry all of a sudden after reading the invitation so what did you expect children like on the one hand if to take it positively a person should get happy that yes they have uh, received some honor they have received an invitation to a party they will enjoy themselves like instead of thinking these positive things she gets angry and she threw away that invitation card in an angry manner she threw that on the table murmuring speaking in a low voice what do you suppose i want with that it means she conveys it to her husband that what what is he thinking that uh, like what are the desires of her what are the desires of mathlid loisel so see next paragraph but my deary i thought it would make you happy you know here mr loisel here she says that that he thought it would make mathlid loisel happy you never go out and this is an occasion and a fine one everybody wishes one and it's very select it's very select i'll tell you the meaning children not many are given to the employees you will see the whole official world there it means you know his heart has been broken mr loisel is feeling dejected but uh, he requests his wife that but my dear i thought it would make you happy it means mr loisel thought that this invitation card to a grand party would bring a smile on the face of madam loisel why because she never goes out she never gets a chance to go out actually like they get very uh, few invitations and this is a grand occasion and a very good one fine one a very fine very good occasion so he also adds that like several employees work employees work there in the education department but he says everybody wishes one it means everybody wants this kind of invitation but what he adds select and it is very select not many are given to the employees it means because the owner is hosting a party so the owner would be able to invite a very few employees either who are extremely hard working or who have like close relations with the owners so that's why those ministries they have given the invitation card to very selective employees like whom they think that they are worthy of calling to the party and you will see the whole world of uh, sorry whole official uh, world there that means that uh, madam loisel will find all the elegant people all the delicacies there so that's what he hoped see next paragraph she looked at him with an irritated eye and declared impatiently what do you suppose i have to wear to such a thing as that so now she has raised her question that why she became angry because she had nothing to wear to such a grand party that's why she gets irritated and very impatiently she declares this statement that i don't have any dress to wear to the party what do you think means what have you thought about that dress to be arranged for that day next paragraph he had not thought of that he stammered obviously he had not considered uh, that dress uh, wearing of or buying of dress to be a big issue he said that he had not thought of that he didn't even pay attention to what such small things so why the dress you wear when we go to theater it seems very pretty it seems very pretty to me he was silent stupefied in dismay so at the sight of his wife weeping he stammered so what's the matter what's the matter by a violent effort she controlled her vexation vexation angry mood you know she was very angry but with a lot of effort she controlled her anger and responded in a calm voice wiping her moist cheeks nothing only i have no dress and consequently i cannot go to the fair means she said it with a bit of uh, loving tone give your card to some other colleague whose wife is better fitted out than i so here 
she says uh, to her husband that uh, like she is not fitted for this role it means because she didn't have any dress to wear to that party so people will laugh at her she would uh, not be the center of attraction that's what she wanted and that's why she cannot go her husband suggested that she, uh, the dress she uh, like whenever they go out for a movie occasionally of course whenever they go to theater she wears a dress and that looks pretty but you know she says that like that is not the dress to be worn in parties that's a theater dress so she declines that and uh, matilda further suggests her husband to give the invitation card to some other employee who have enough resources enough dresses jewelry etc to attend this lavish party i hope that's also clear till now so he was grieved but answered of of course he was hurt he was sad at these remarks but answered let's see matilda how much would a suitable costume cost something that would serve for other occasions something very simple see the middle class mentality children we too feel like this like people from middle class families often think that if we buy a dress we keep, we do not only keep in mind the current function we keep in mind that this dress should also be uh, like uh, used in two to three other occasions to come in further life right so we think of this thing as well so see here she, he feels sad but even then like by taking up courage he asks matilda that uh, you know what would be the approximate cost of the dress that she wants to purchase so that she can become happy by wearing that dress and attending this party and uh, also warns her that the dress should be uh, such that or the dress should be like that which could be you know used at some other occasions also some sober dress so so she says she reflected for some seconds thinking of a sum that she could ask for without bringing it with an immediate refusal and a frightened exclamation from the economical clerk so finally she said in a hesitating voice so what she said you know the situation is created that when he was aggrieved and asked for matilda's demand matilda reflected she thought for a few seconds like she cannot even speak out for a huge sum because she knows that Uh, her husband is a small clerk he is having a very small job and he cannot afford uh, like a costly dress that's why she thinks for a few seconds so that like she should not ask for much money or a big amount of money so that like her demand may get an immediate refusal right so that's why she thought for a while and finally what she said see on the next page so in a hesitating voice she said i cannot tell exactly but it seems to me that 400 francs ought to cover it so ob- obviously children we cannot tell the exact price of any dress that is available in the market so uh, in a hesitating tone she said that she doesn't know it exactly but yes if she gets 400 francs so she can arrange a dress with those francs like that much money is sufficient he turned a pale a little pale it means mr loisel's face turned pale like 400 francs was a big amount for her, for him so for he had saved just this sum to buy a gun that he might be able to join some hunting parties the next summer with some friends who went to shoot larks on sunday nevertheless he answered very well i'll give you 400 francs but try to have a pretty dress please so finally you know he had saved only 400 francs it means nothing was there in his saving his personal account so he was having only 400 francs and he had to give his consent like otherwise he had planned it to buy a gun because his friends often go for hunting parties and he too wanted to go for a hunting party in the next summer vacations so he had to cancel that plan of purchasing a gun and he consented to give 400 francs to methylid loisel but also advised her to get a pretty dress to get a beautiful dress so read and find out what fresh problems now disturb madam loisel it means see one problem is going to be solved what problem problem of purchasing a new dress 
now fresh problems will crop up you know a person having a mind which invites problem after problem can never be happy so this concept is emphasized in the chapter next question how is the problem solved of course if a problem is there solution would always be there you know where there is uh, a lock a key would always be there so the day of the ball ball means that night party the day of the ball approached and madam loisel seemed sad disturbed anxious nevertheless her dress was nearly ready her husband said to her one evening so what's the matter with you you have acted strangely for 2 to 3 days and she responded i am vexed not to have a jewel nothing to adorn myself with adorn means decorate i shall have such a poverty stricken look i would not pref i would uh, prefer not to go to this party he replied you can wear some natural flowers in this season they look very chic she was not convinced no she replied this is there is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of rich women then her husband cried out like how stupid we are go and find your my friend madam forestier and ask her to lend you her jewels so see children as the day of that party arrived near approached means arrived near so matilda became sad once again and when asked by mr loisel that why are you sad now like i have fulfilled your demand by investing 400 francs and why are you sad now like your mood is not set for 2 to 3 days and she responded that she is angry because she is not having any jewelry so if somebody is not wearing any jewelry they look poor obviously they look poverty stricken they look poor and she says that she should better not go to any party because she never wants to look poor you know what is her dream her dream is to look rich her dream is not to be rich her dream is to look rich her dream is to you know get the compliments get the praise of others so that's why she says that she should prefer not to go to that party further mr loisel uh, you know advised her to wear some natural flowers since that was the season to wear that and uh, those look very attractive but she was not convinced it means she denied to that and said that like she doesn't want to be an object of laughter among the rich women you know that's a party of officials and only rich people only luxurious people would be there and they will be wearing heavy jewelry they will come in big cars they will be wearing lavish dresses so that's why she will look poor there and she said no and what is the final suggestion you know this is the fresh problem previous problem was of not having a dress to wear to the party the problem was solved as mr loisel gave consent to spend his 400 francs on this page fresh problem of jewelry has arisen and to this also mr loisel has suggested some solution that how stupid we are means why uh, she shouldn't go to her friend madam forestier you know her classmate in uh, that convent school so why uh, she shouldn't go to that rich friend and ask her some jewels just borrow the jewels uh, for wearing to that party so that was a brilliant idea given by mr loisel she uttered a cry of joy it's true she said i had not thought of that the next day she looked herself sorry she took herself to her friend's house and uh, related her story of distress distress means dukh so madam forestier went to her closet took out a large jewel case brought it opened it and said choose my dear she saw at last some bracelets then a collar of pearls then a venetian cross of gold and jewels of admirable workmanship she tried the jewels before the glass hesitated but could neither decide to take them or leave them then she asked have you nothing more why yes look for yourself i don't know what will please you suddenly she discovered in a black satin box a superb necklace of diamonds 
her hands trembled as she took it out you know if we carry a very costly thing our hands tremble that the thing that is beyond our capacity our hands why those hands tremble because we feel insecure that this thing should not be broken or uh, like no harm should be done so she placed it about her throat crossing her dress and was ecstatic you know it gave her extreme joy then she asked in a hesitating voice full of an anxiety could you lend me this only this why yes certainly she fell upon the neck of her friend embraced her with passion and then went away with her treasure so see children what has happened in these three short paragraphs so she goes to madam forestier she tells her tale of distress that how she remains unhappy due to her poverty stricken state like uh, why she suffers a lot because you know she is not rich she belongs to a poor family and she has been married to a poor clerk she has to go to a party and she needs jewelry for that otherwise she would look uh, very shabby very poor and uh, listening to the story madam forestier was a generous lady and she said that uh, yes of course she can lend her jewel uh, jewelry as she wanted so she showed her many pieces but as i described so only one piece uh, she liked the most and very hesitatingly she asked that can i take this for a few days can i wear this on the party and uh, madam forestier said yes of course why can't so the two friends hugged each other and she went away with that diamond necklace so see what happens next the day of the ball arrived the day of the party arrived madam loisel was a great success she was the prettiest of all elegant gracious smiling and full of joy all the men noticed her you know this is what she wanted everybody should notice her everybody should praise her asked her name wanted to be presented she danced with enthusiasm intoxicated with pleasure thinking of nothing but all this admiration the victory so complete and sweet to her heart you know she danced with enthusiasm she danced with a lot of zeal and enthusiasm she became intoxicated she became mad with pleasure she became so happy and you know she was not thinking of anything but only the admiration the praise she was getting from men like all the men in the party were noticing her you know everybody every man noticed her they asked her name like who she is like she is so beautiful uh, you know so rich because she looked rich she was wearing a decent dress and very costly jewelry so everybody was smiling at her and she was mad you know she has become mad in such a situation so the victory is so complete it means it was a kind of victory like she felt that she has won a battle and it was the best moment of her life so see uh, what happens next in the story she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning her husband had been half asleep in one of the little saloons since midnight with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much you know the wives of three men were enjoying themselves while the uh, two men along with mr loisel they were taking rest because you know i'll tell you the situation further that they have to attend their office again like tomorrow morning they have to attend their office again so he was half asleep he was not able to notice properly he was not able to see the things properly he threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried you know as a husband uh, showing the symbol of love so modest wrap modest means uh, the the one that is humble the one that is uh, worn by poor people or middle class people so you know people often by 3 or 4 o'clock people often wear uh, shawls or stalls while coming back from the parties because even in summers by 2 or 3 o'clock so it becomes a bit of cold so uh, like he gave her a wrap you know they had carried whose poverty clashed the elegance of the ball costume now she is feeling a bit of nervous bit sad why because she feels that the poverty she is facing so that uh, you know shawl was showing her poverty and it was opposite to that ball costume 
ball costume means the dress she was wearing to that ball so the shawl was contrast to that the opposite to that so she wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by other women who were wrapping themselves in rich fur you know uh, rich people rich women were wearing the stalls that were made of fur that were very costly and that's why she wanted to leave the party as soon as possible so that the reputation which she has earned in the party by looking so rich should not be lost like people should not come to know that she is a poor lady and uh, like she wears such uh, you know shabby shawls or i may say such humble shawl so loisel detained her loisel mr loisel asked her to wait said he i am going to call a cab but she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly you know she was intoxicated with pleasure and she was not ready to listen to mr loisel and she got down the stairs rapidly hurriedly when they were in the street they found no carriage and began to seek for one hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance hailing means you know uh, like calling uh, by making the symbol of a hand so that's why you know they here are calling a coachman whom they see that he was at a distance because they could found no carriage to go to home easily so that's why they have to wait on the street and they have to walk a few steps also they walked along toward the river hopeless and shivering finally they found one of those old carriages that one sees in paris after nightfall so finally they found that one of the old carriages was there you know it was just like a dream come true for matilda it was like a dream come true as you know they found a carriage that one can see in paris after the night falls so that was also beautiful it took them as far as their door and they went wearily wearily means a very they were very much tired so it took them to their house the carriage took them to their door and uh, like they were very much tired and they went to their apartment it was all over for her you know it was all over for her means she had lived her entire life in that 4 to 5 hours of party so the party was over for her now and on his part he remembered that he have to be uh, at the office by 10 o'clock so what tension was looming large on the mind of mr loisel that uh, since that was uh, it was 4 o'clock and he has to go to his office by 10 so just 3 to 4 hours were there in between to take rest get ready have breakfast everything like all those things are to be done in these 4 to 5 hours so she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass you know females often after coming back from the party they look themselves in the mirror uh, in order to have a last look at them like how uh, beautiful they are looking for a final view of herself in her glory suddenly she uttered a cry her necklace was not around her neck so the first part of the story ends here when she utters a cry suddenly noticing in mirror that uh, you know her necklace was missing she has lost that necklace loisel already half undressed asked what's the matter she turned towards him excitedly i have i have i no longer have madam forestier's necklace so uh, mr loisel see as the buttons of his shirt are half open so uh, he was about to undress himself he was about to change and uh, you know he uttered a uh, sudden astonishment astonishment it means he was also shocked on noticing that madam forestier's necklace was not there he arose in a dismay you know sad tone dismay what how's that it's not possible and looked in the folds of the dresses folds of the cloak in pockets everywhere they couldn't find it he asked have are you uh, sorry you are sure you still had it when we let them left the minister's house now he is asking that if the necklace was with her when the people left the minister's house yes i felt it was when we came out so matilda answers that yes she was wearing that necklace while coming out of the party she felt it it means she touched that necklace but if you had lost it in the street we should have heard it fall it must be in the cab yes it's possible did you take the number no and you did you notice what it was no matilda said they looked at each other utterly cast down finally loisel dressed himself again you know 
द मिशन फॉर मिस्टर लॉयजल हैज स्टार्टेड जस्ट नाउ लाइक हर हिज प्रॉब्लम वर नॉट गोइंग टू एन एंड बिकॉज लाइक ही वॉज हैविंग सच अ डिमांडिंग वाइफ एंड सी वट शी हैज़ डन अ ब्लंडर हैज़ बिन डन एंड शी हैज़ लॉस द नेकलेस नाउ द पीपल आर आस्किंग ईच अदर द डिड यू नोटिस द कैब नंबर डिड यू टेक द ड्राइवर्स नंबर नो नो बडी लाइक नन ऑफ दीज टू पीपल हैड डन दैट एंड दे आर थिंकिंग दैट इफ नेकलेस हैड फॉलन ऑन द स्ट्रीट दे मस्ट हैव हर्ड द नॉइस ऑफ इट सो इफ इट हैड नॉट फॉलन देन यू नो इट मस्ट हैव फॉलन इन द कैब but nobody knew where that cab would now be so he dressed himself up once again buttoned up his shirt and said i am going over the track where he went on to foot to see if he can find it he went on and she remained in her evening gown not having the force to go to bed so towards 7 o'clock her husband returned he had found nothing you know he again like no poor fellow again worked uh, for Three hours, like he searched for the necklace everywhere on the entire way, but he could not find that. He went to the police and to the cab offices and put an advertisement in the newspapers offering a reward. So obviously, you know, they were so poor, but he had to do that. You know, putting an advertisement in the newspaper is so costly, and besides that, he offered a reward that whosoever would bring that necklace to them will be given a reward in return. so you know how foolish that person be if like somebody has stolen that necklace how foolish uh, like on the part of that uh, person to return that like necklace oh obviously nobody was going to return that so she waited all day in the state of bewilderment bewilderment means confusion before this frightful disaster loisel returned in the evening his face pale he had discovered nothing means when he turned up in the morning after searching it for 3 hours he could not find anything then they went to get get its report noted they were in confusion that a disastrous frightful thing had happened with them so he turned in the evening uh, searching it everywhere his face has turned pale and uh, like he was not able to find anything at all he said write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and that you will get it repaired that that will give us some time to find it she wrote as he dictated it means they sent a message written message to madam forestier that some wrap some clasp of the necklace has been broken and it needs to be repaired so madam loisel would return it after repairing it after a week or so so they sent that letter at the end of the week they had lost all hope and loisel older by 5 years declared we must rip, uh, you know replace this jewel so they finally decided to buy a new diamond necklace to return to madam forestier you know because uh, that was the question of their honor they were not having any hope since many days have passed and they had to return that so in a shop of palais royal notice children they found a chaplet of diamonds which seemed to them exactly look the one they had lost it means children that was not the same necklace remember this is not same this is similar it is written which seemed to them exactly like the one like means similarity it was valued at 40000 francs you know it was very difficult for mr loisel to arrange you know 400 francs now the necklace costs them 40000 francs they could get it for 36000 it means after getting the discount or after means uh, doing the bargaining with the shopkeeper it was fixed that he would sell it to them for 36000 loisel possessed 18000 francs you know inheritance the property which he has inherited from his father it all together it cost 18000 so he has to sell everything he had which his father had left him he borrowed the rest it means 36000 francs were to be arranged 18 he had 18 he borrowed he made reunious promises reunious promises means he made such promises to the people which would ruin his future life 
so took money from usurers and whole race of lenders it means you know 18000 francs was such a big amount such a big amount that no one person could arrange it so he had to borrow it from several people means she he borrowed it from different different people somebody lent 500 francs somebody lent 2000 francs somebody 1000 so on and so forth so then he went to get the necklace depositing on the merchant's counter 36000 francs finally they were able to arrange it by taking big loan on heavy rate of interest they finally brought that when madam loisel took back the jewels to uh, madam forestier the letter said to her in a frigid tone you should have returned them to me sooner for i might have needed them you know so, like much of the time has passed and now only she was able to arrange it but madam forestier was not happy at the idea of returning it so late and she asked uh, with a contemptuous tone frigid harsh and rigid tone rigid means harsh so rigid tone that mr Lo uh, sorry madam loisel should have returned the necklace sooner why because uh, the necklace belonged to madam forestier and she should have needed it at certain times so it is so late but uh, you know madam forestier didn't open the jewel box and loisel feared she would she uh, would uh, sorry what would she think if she should perceive the substitution you know she is afraid madam loisel is afraid that forestier should not open that jewelry box why if she opened she would clearly perceive she will understand that this is not the same diamond necklace which madam loisel borrowed from her uh, like uh, instead the necklace has been substituted means it has been replaced what should she say would she take her for a robber it means uh, madam loisel is thinking that she would be considered a thief but see madam loisel now knew the horrible life of necessity the writer says that the one who used to remain sad she would now come to know what poverty is like she was not poor earlier but she will become poor now she did her part however completely heroically you know it was also not an easy deed to borrow such a big amount of money and you know that was a heroic task it was necessary to pay this frightful debt she would pay it they sent away the maid they changed their lodgings they rented some rooms in an attic so they had to sell their house as well they had to say no to their maid as well they changed their house and took some uh, room an attic took a room on rent because they had sold their house as the money lenders were asking for the money again and again she learned the odious work of a kitchen you know that kitchen work she used to hate and she used to get it done by a maid she hated that so she washed the dishes of course she had to act as a worker in houses so she washed the dishes soiled linen their clothes and dish clothes which she hung on in the line to dry it means she used to do such petty tasks she took down the refuse to street each morning and brought up the water stopping at each landing to catch her breath it means it was very difficult for her to stop at uh, you know to carry the dirty things of people uh, wash their dirty clothes their dirty utensils like she stopped at each landing uh, to take a breath to take a bit of rest brought up water right clothed like a woman of the people she went to the grocers butchers fruiterers with her basket on her arm shopping hanging to the last so of her miserable money so she had very little money to spend but she had to go from one shop to the other like now she is knowing what poverty is the thing that she used to hate a lot now she feels what it is the husband worked evenings putting the books of some merchants in order and nights he often did copying at 5 saws a page so and this life lasted for 10 years at the end of 10 years they had restored all madam loisel seemed old now she had become a strong hard woman the crude woman of poor household her hair badly dressed her skirts awry her hands red
she spoke in a loud tone and washed the floors with large pails of water you know the frustrated uh, i may say frustrated workers who like don't have that much capacity to work but yes they really need money so that's why they have to work for other people so she used to you know spill large pails of water in order to wash the floors of people sometimes her husband was at office and she would seat herself before the window and think of that evening party of former times of the same ball when she was so beautiful and so flattered you know such a foolish nonsense fellow like she still thinks of that party when she lost that necklace like how beautiful that time was before losing of the diamond necklace like now she had become a hard woman working every uh, like doing every kind of work for people and uh, you know becoming a servant to one and all so this harsh life lasted for 10 years it means they were able to pay off all their debts for uh, sorry all their debts in 10 year 10 10 years like that that was a like long long time so she sometimes used to sit idle take rest when she was alone and think of those beautiful moments which she enjoyed in those 3 to 4 hours how would it have been if she had not lost the necklace who knows how singular is life and how full of changes how small a thing will ruin or save one so see how would it have been means like what she thinks that uh, how would her life have been it means she would not have to do people's household work clean their utensils and all and act like a servant like you know she is thinking that destiny is a big thing life shows a lot of changes it's full of variety like a small thing can ruin us and a small thing can save our life so see one sunday she was taking a walk in the champs alley to rid herself you know in the garden she was taking a walk and to get rid of the cares of the week means tensions weekly tensions daily tensions she suddenly perceived a woman walking with a child it was madam forestier still young pretty attractive loisel was affected you know she become sad once again she was already sad but she become sad again to see that beautiful charming uh, pretty young madam forestier her friend so should she speak to her certainly now that she has paid she would tell her all why not she approached her good morning genie her friend did not recognize her and was astonished to be so familiarly addressed by common personage she stammered but madam i don't know you you have been mistaken no i am metalid loisel her friend uttered a cry of astonishment oh my poor metalda how have you changed see the two friends meeting here the one on the right side of the picture is methylid loisel and on the left side is madam forestier like she has become so worn out so dirty and see madam forestier still looks young even after 10 years so matilda here tries to call her and she calls her by her dear name jini she wished her good morning and uh, she feels that she should not hesitate to meet uh, madam forestier because she has paid uh, like she has made all the payment for that uh, diamond necklace so see yes i had some hard days since i saw you and some miserable ones and all because of you see the ungrateful people instead of showing some gratitude so here she says that like she had much hard time she had a difficult time because of her because of me how's that you recall the diamond necklace that you loaned me to wear to the minister's ball yes very well well i lost it how's that since you returned it to me i returned Uh, another to you exactly like that and it has taken us 10 years to pay for it you can understand it it was not easy for us to uh, you know who have nothing but it's finished i am decently content decently content means i am satisfied in my life here uh, madam loisel tells her a lie that she is happy she is content in her life in fact she tells her that she lost that diamond necklace which she borrowed from madam forestier to wear for the uh, to wear in that uh, minister's party 
and she also explained to madam forestier that it took them 10 years of hard labor to pay for it they sold their house they sold their belongings furniture they had to go to a rented house so they had a very very difficult life for these 10 years so but all that is finished and she is happy madam forestier stopped short she said you say you bought a diamond necklace to replace mine so she is shocked and she asked uh, loisel that did you buy a diamond necklace in order to replace my necklace so yes you did not perceive it then they were just alike so madam forest sorry madam loisel here says that they didn't you notice the difference the necklaces were alike means they were similar but it was not the same necklace which i returned to you and smiled with proud and uh, simple joy you know madam forestier was also astonished that she did not perceive it it means madam loisel like how can a poor person understand but uh, you know the difference of an artificial or a gold jewelry because it was painted like you know that she could not understand madam forestier was touched you know she was shocked and took her hands and she replied as she replied oh my poor matilda mine were false those were not worth over 500 francs so she discloses by the end of the story that poor matilda you should have consulted me if you had lost the necklace like you brought it for 36000 francs and my necklace just costed it was co- its cost was maximum 500 francs like that was not at all costly and you replaced a diamond necklace mine was made of false diamonds it was an artificial necklace didn't you get it so the story ends here a very sad ending i must say that like one of the beautiful stories which i have read so guy d my pasand has written a beautiful beautiful story for giving a big moral to the audience and in one line if we describe the moral of the story is neither a borrower nor a lender be a very famous saying i hope you must have heard it before my saying neither a borrower it means don't borrow anything from others don't borrow never borrow nor a lender be and don't lend your possessions to other right yeah? we often have friends and in friend circle so uh, the the people often ask that uh, like give us uh, your car for a few days we need your this furniture for a few days we need that can you lend us so that was not only painful for matilda to return that diamond necklace out of that misunderstanding so it became more painful for madam forestier who came to know that who came to know later that matilda has lost 10 precious years of her life in which she could have enjoyed it like she could have enjoyed her life well if she had not gone through such a terrible disastrous incident so that's why it was a moral for both the ladies like it was not only matilda's mistake to borrow such a costly thing or such a thing which looked costly it was madam forestier's mistake as well to lend this diamond necklace to matilda because you know if we lose one of our possessions we don't feel that bad we don't feel that much de- dejected of course uh, we uh, like seem to get some tension for a few days but with the passage of time we lose that we feel that okay if that is done leave that but you know if we lose some borrowed thing that becomes very difficult to return because we have lost the thing and we have lost the money as well so that was the moral of the story i hope you must have liked it so stay in touch do the back exercise questions so i'll share the answer key very shortly stay at home thank you